What is up ladies and gentlemen, you're watching another Madman Film Breakdown right here on the Madman Sports Network and today I'm talking about one of my personal favorite prospects, Taven Bryan, the defensive end, defensive tackle, whatever you want to call him, defensive lineman out of Florida University. A guy who I've seen going as early as the mid first round and as late as like the third, fourth round. I think that late third, fourth round is unbelievably like wrong. They could not be more wrong when it comes to that. And at first, when I first watched him, I could not believe he wasn't the number one defensive prospect in this draft, honestly. I, or at least that he wasn't a top three, four guy. I did notice something about him that we'll get to later that probably explains why some scouts aren't as high as, on him as I am. But I'm going to show you just what makes him so special and why personally, and I don't care what anyone else's opinion is, I really don't. Sometimes it just happens. If anyone, you know, a long time ago said Antonio Brown was their number one prospect, they would have been called a psychopath, and look at him now. I am touting Taven Bryan until I see anything otherwise, and I've looked, not in depth, but I've at least gotten a decent amount of snaps on over 100 prospects now in this draft class, and he is my number one non-quarterback prospect. Of course, you gotta put that quarterbacks ahead. I separate them, honestly, pretty much. I have him ahead of every other defensive prospect or offensive prospect I've seen. He's just that good. So let's get right to it. What makes him so special? His explosiveness off, you know, when it comes to just jumping off the line of scrimmage, timing his, you know, his jumping at the quarterback, timing his pass rush just perfectly. We'll watch it right here. So here's a few examples. There's Taven right there. Watch this. Boom. Look at this. Right off the bat. Notice how far ahead he is already of everybody. Notice that he's the first one to get engaged. And notice now already again just how far ahead he is of all these other defensive linemen. Now he does end up getting double teamed right there and he commands so many double and triple teams and you'll even see it here and that's another thing that makes him so special and unfortunately that's why I couldn't find as many great plays like this is because of how often he was just getting taken out of plays by double and triple teams because that's what you have to do that's the amount of attention he commands. So that's one right there. You'll see a few more examples as we go along. Here's another one. There he is right there and again just go back notice he's the first one jumping already off the bat it's just, uh, this one right here did a pretty good job as well he's far ahead of these two linemen right around him and then he managed to just drive that lineman back enough doesn't end up getting pressure or anything but it's more about just his ability to explode so here's another one you'll see him lined up there notice he can line up on both sides of the field you'll see him lined up inside you'll see him lined up outside lined up as you know a three or five tech which is very impressive for him it's the type of player you can move around on the line the same reason people love Minka Fitzpatrick so much, because you can line him up at, you know, safety, linebacker, corner, whatever, nickel, outside. You can line Taven Bryan up really on any of the four parts of the field when you're lined up in any sort of 4-3, and probably on either defensive end, uh, you know, position when you're lined up in 3-4. So here's another one again. Look at that. He's already just bulldozing his way through this lineman while these other three, four, five, nobody else is even close to his far head. Now, again, he gets driven away. Uh, you know, the lineman did a good job there. But this section is more just about his ability to just perfectly time his jump at the snap, his perfectly timed, you know, first engagement and his explosiveness as well. As well, He's able to just build up that speed and momentum so quickly that he's able to drive lineman back pretty regularly. And you'll see it soon here. So here's another one. Notice him right there. This time he's lined up inside. Look at that. Just again, brief second, but that extra split second. The ball is not even in the quarterback's hands yet, and he's already getting ready to pounce. He drives his lineman back with ease, doesn't get his hand up or anything like that, and that's one thing we'll talk about later is his awareness, something that I think really needs to be worked on. But just timing that explosive jump off the snap is so impressive that it really takes away some of the other maybe weaknesses that we'll look at a little later on. Now here's one more again in the goal line situation. He's again ahead, jumps ahead, even though he kind of went they, you know, they have my, I don't know what it's called. This is where I wish I had more experience with it. Even though he kind of jumps across the line, he's still ahead of everybody else here. And now watch this. Triple team. Three linemen are dedicated to Taven Bryan. One here, one here. And that is why this defensive lineman right here has the one-on-one -on -one matchup with what I believe is a running back. Yes, it is. And he's able to drive back there, get his hand up, and force some pressure. Because Taven Bryan was able to take so much attack. Look at all these defensive backs in the end zone. And they're all there because Taven Bryan is taking on three linemen at once. That's the type of impact he has on a game. Notice this is the fourth quarter as well. As the game goes on, coaches just have to devote more and more people to watching out. 
Now, before we talk about his strength, I do just want to mention that if you know you're watching this so far and thinking, "Oh, well, these plays are kind of impressive," but you know, he's not really getting any sacks or anything like that. I save the best plays, the ones where you don't really need to look as hard, for the end, for the highlights. So you'll see them at the end where he kind of actually gets some real pressures and real sacks. So this is the ones more where you have to kind of pay attention and see what his individual impact was, even if it didn't have a direct, you know, impact in the stat sheet. So now let's talk about his strength, because he's 290, which is pretty big, and you just saw how explosive he is. The fact that he's that explosive at that weight is ridiculous. He's also even stronger than you think he would be. He really has the strength of a solid 300 pounder at times, the way he kind of abuses these linemen at times. So let's take a few, let's take a look at a few of them right here. Here's the first one. Just watch him right there. Just watch the way he just breaks through that double team, shoves aside that one lineman. Look at that. <laughs> That's the lineman, and now he's just gets away from him. That wasn't the right one, actually, so I'm exaggerating a little bit, but still, just watch the way again. They double-team him, or at least they attempt to. He just breaks right through it, tries to get to the quarterback, doesn't realize it was handed off, actually, but he commanded so much attention that it ends up being a short loss for that running back. Now, here's another one right here. You'll see him lined up there inside this time, and watch him just, dis you know, just push off this lineman easily to create some space, gets held, and gets dragged down. So I'm not really concerned about how that play with how that play end. I'm ended. I'm more concerned with how he was able to just get away from this lineman so easily. And now, if he wasn't getting held, that's either a sack or a big pressure. Good job by this lineman right here as well. So he does get held at the end and gets dragged to the ground. But again, I'm more interested right here. Boom, pushes him away, creates the space, and he has the quickness to get by him. Just a combination of speed and strength there. So here's another one here. Now you'll see him line up on the other side. Again, notice how he's ahead of all the linemen right there. Explosiveness still intact. He's getting double teamed, now triple teamed at some point, and he manages to just maintain his balance, maintain his strength, gets to the other side. If this quarterback does decide to run, which he doesn't, Taven will be one of the other players there to help make that stop. But again, I'm more interested in what was going on in the trenches. Just the fact that he's getting double teamed, he's managing to drive them all back at the same time, and he doesn't let them abuse them or push them over. There's a lot of players where if they're getting that, you know, mauled by multiple players, they might just get straight knocked to the ground. Not only does he not get knocked, he manages to push them back about five yards. That's very impressive. He's just so strong. Not just for his size, but really for anybody. So now here's another one. You'll see him lined up right here inside. Now, this game against LSU, by the way, I have to make a note here. He was double teamed nearly every play he was on the field. That's what type of attention he draws on this defense. So you saw a lot of other players getting the pressures, you know, getting in the quarterback space. But that's because because of Brian, they were all able to get one-on-one -on -one matchups. So it was tough to find some real, like, highlight plays for Brian, because there were so many plays they were not running his in his direction, they were assigning a lot of double and some triple teams to him as well, and still, when they did occasionally, like on this play, let him be, go one-on-one -on -one with a, gu a guard, for example, right here, watch how easily, there he is, watch how easily he just gets right by him, he does fall over at the end as he tries to kind of make his jump for the QB, QB gets rid of the ball pretty fast, but still, just the quick way he just uses his right shoulder uh, left shoulder right there gets right by the lineman and at least manages to somewhat disrupt the pass now the pass was completed it was a pretty short easy gain quick play right there he's in the shotgun but i'm more interested just in how quickly he got past this lineman with a combination of explosiveness and strength now here's the last one this is the most impressive one you'll see him right there lined up inside again watch him drive this lineman back <laughs> notice anything about this play Notice that these three are all at least three yards behind Brian. This lineman, that he, poor lineman, he's probably getting abused by the coach in the film room, film room. Just watch Brian just drive him back. Use that leg strength. He really, one main thing I see with a lot of these defensive linemen, they're all big, they're all strong. The difference between them and the NFL players is how a lot of them don't really understand yet how to leverage their lower body strength. They have ridiculous lower body strength, but they don't really understand how to leverage it yet. And Brian is a master when it comes to that. Just look at this. Look at the way he's just driving him back, maintains his leverage on him. Again, doesn't get his hand up or anything, and we're going to get right to the awareness next, because that's kind of my big, you know, knock on him. But still, that's just ridiculous strength. It, one lineman should not be able to abuse another lineman that easily, and Brian makes it look like a joke. So how is it that somebody who's so versatile, again, you can really line him up anywhere on the defensive line, somebody so clearly explosive, and somebody so strong, and obviously it has results, it has effect, how is it that he's not, uh, you know, consensus top 10 pick for a lot of people? 
but maybe there's some other reasons that I don't know of, but one that I really noticed, and it didn't jump off on screen until I really watched it more deeply, is that he really does, he's going to struggle as a run stuffer early, and I believe it is coachable, I believe the coaches will be able to find a way, and even if it isn't, coaches will find a way to put him on the field, he's just too talented to where they'll be able to work around it, but he had some really nice opportunities to make big stops in the run game, and he ended up whipping on him, and it was really because of a lack of awareness for the most part, and then also just because maybe it's because his arms aren't quite as long as some of the other players. Like, there are some plays where I look and I'm like, oh, Vita V would have made that stop, and Brian didn't. So let's take a look here. Here's one. Ball is snapped. Watch him going right here. Running back has the ball, and he goes right by and goes for the quarterback. So he really bites on what I'm assuming was either a read option or something. Either way, he has a chance right there to dive, make a stop behind the line of scrimmage, and instead he goes for the quarterback. Now, maybe that was just his responsibility, but a better, more aware player with time would have been able to make that stop behind the line of scrimmage. So now here's another one. You'll see him lined up right here. There's, uh, there's Brian. Ball is snapped. Look at him. He's still looking at the running back. Quarterback has the ball. Quarterback's rolling out. He's going very far. Brian still has no idea what's going on. By the time he realizes the quarterback's about to make the throw, it is far too late. So this is, you know, the way he bit on that play action, it took him far too long to realize that this ball carrier does not have the ball. And by now, he's ineffective. Now, would he really have been able to make the stop anyway? No, but if maybe he had realized right here, right as the quarterback, you know, takes the ball back, maybe he could have disengaged, turned back around, and at least put a little bit of pressure on this QB. Now, I don't know if that pass was even completed or anywhere or not. It ended up being a short game. But Brian could have been the difference if he had a little more awareness. So here they are on the goal line right here. Ball is snapped. Now this one, he has him. He has the running back right here. And he just whiffs. Now he does kind of get his one hand on him and slow him down at least. But again, he has the, you know, angle and leverage right there. We're a really elite run stuffer. And again, I'm thinking mostly V to V because he's the one that I've studied so much. Would have made that stop, kind of wrapped him up behind the line. Again, at least he got a hand on him and helped slow him, slow him down for the rest of his teammates. And again, it was a really, really nice jump, really nice job of, you know, being on the right side, actually. But a better run stuffer would have made that stop. So now here's another one right here. Notice Brian right there. Ball will be snapped. Ball carrier is number 83 right here. Look at this. On this split screen, this pause screen, Ryan should have this stop five yards behind the line of scrimmage, make it third and nine. And instead, he just completely whiffs, because notice, for just this extra brief second, he's still looking at the running back right here. He just doesn't realize that there's a player, and now by the time he realizes it, look at how he's turning his head back, it's just too late, he kind of gets driven back. Now, I do get that he's kind of getting mauled by this lineman as well, but if he, you know got a better grip on him he could have made that stop now it might also just be that he had the wrong angle but really the sooner he had realized if he realizes he has the ball right here he can kind of cut back to the outside and make the stop so that's really where i'm concerned if he could be you know that that, that might lead to him being taken off the field and really only being used early in his career as a situational pass rusher on second and third down and here's another one right here one more so ball is snapped and right there he gets a nice break Really does a good job of getting, you know, throwing this lineman to the ground. Has the running back and just completely whiffs. So sometimes it's not awareness. Sometimes it's just that he whiffs on some tackles. Now, that that I believe absolutely he can fix. That I believe is coachable. The awareness I'm a little more worried about. Now, he's such a threat when it comes to being com uh, commanding double teams, commanding triple teams. He's so explosive and he's such a dynamic pass rusher that I'm going to overlook it a little bit for now, even though I will acknowledge that it's a big weakness and I understand why people will have them lower on his draft boards. Now, fourth round, I think, is ridiculous because I can't see that one weakness really being the reason that you drop him that low. I can understand why you want to take him maybe the very late first round, mid, early, mid second round. I get that. That's not going to change my opinion, and I'll get to that in this wrap-up right here. So thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. By now, you should know I have a first-round grade on Brian. I understand why other people don't, but I absolutely believe that with the right coaching and with just more reps and experience within a year or two, maybe he won't be, and I apologize for that pop-up, but whatever, I'm not redoing this. Maybe he won't be, you know, a superstar on day one necessarily, but it's very rare to find players who you're able to line up all over the field like this. That's what makes guys like Aaron Donald and Fletcher Cox so special. Now, is Brian going to be as good as either of those players? 
I can't say yes or no to that. I absolutely can't say yes just because it, it, I can't say any player in this draft is going to be the best defensive tackle or best player in the NFL. But that is what makes him special, and he really does possess all the physical traits and just those instincts to be able to make plays and be effective early on. Again, I absolutely believe that really good coaches will find a way to utilize him, and I think he's really being overlooked, and maybe when the combine comes and he puts up some great numbers, even though I don't care about it, maybe as the combine comes, maybe just as uh, people start evaluating more film, you'll start film, you'll start to see him shooting up some draft boards. So you heard it here first, that Taven Bryan is absolutely worth a top 10 pick at the very least. I would take him in the first round with my pick. If my defense needed any sort of toughness in the trenches and my offensive line was a little more set, I'd probably go offensive line first, then defensive line. I don't know. It would really depend on the needs of my team. But right now, he's very high on my big board, and I have a feeling he'll stay there unless I see something crazy. Follow us on Twitter at TheMadManSports. Follow me on Twitter at BSUL21. And hit that big red subscribe button. We'll have more coming for you as we get closer to the NFL draft.